Well, good afternoon and welcome to the 2021 Spring Alumni Career Conversations that is taking place right before Counts Spring Career Fair. We do this wonderful career panel every year right before the Spring Career Fair. And, uh, and this year we're doing our panel virtually with four incredible alumni. Uh, today's session is going to be moderated by the president of the Saudi Arabian alumni chapter, Hussein Shibli, who graduated from KAUST with his masters in 2013. And Hussein will be leading the career conversation today with our alumni presenters, who include Jamana Bagabra, Ahmed Alamudi, and Umair bin Wahid. So enjoy today's career conversation, and I'm going to hand over to you, Hussein, to lead the conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lee, and uh, looking forward for an informative and useful discussion with my uh, panelists. I'm happy uh, to be joined by Jumana Bagabra and Umair bin Wahid and Ahmed Al Amoudi today. I would like uh, in the beginning uh, to hear from each one of you about your current uh, career and in your degree from cows and some personal information uh, to be shared with uh, our audience before going on deeper in your career experience. So I would like to start with uh, Omer bin Wahid. Uh, if you could please give us a bit of your uh, current job, Omer. Sure. Hi, Hussein and Lee. Thank you for the invitation. I'm really looking forward to the conversation here. So currently I am an assistant professor at King Fahd University of Petroleum and Minerals here. And uh, my, my job responsibilities include teaching, research, and uh, you know service at the university level. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it about my current role. Great, thank you, Ahmed. Thank you very much. Um, Ahmed, if you could tell us about uh, your current job and uh, degree from KAUST. Absolutely. So uh, I graduated from KAUST back in 2018 uh, with a mechanical engineering degree. And I joined the Public Investment Fund uh, again back in 2018 and the International Investments Team and specifically the private equity team. And I've been there for about two years and a half, going into the third year. So this is in brief what I'm doing right now. Oh, that's great. I look forward to hear how this uh, changed from your graduation as mechanical engineer to your career currently. In Absolutely. Up coming up. Uh, Jumana, if you could tell us about your uh, digital specialty and your current work. Of course. Um, first of all, thank you so much for having me. It's very nice to virtually be uh, back at KAUST. Um, so right now I'm a digital policy expert. I work at uh, the National Digital Transformation Unit. Um, it basically uh, aims to promote digital transformation across the kingdom. Um, and uh, at KAUST, I graduated in 2014. Uh, I did a master's in computer science. Oh, great to hear. And I'm, I'm sure you are having uh, a very uh, pressuring time with transformation in the kingdom, the digital era, <laughs> and the future of that, and your uh, tremendous contribution to that. So starting with you, Jumana, would you tell, uh, tell us more about your work as a digital policy expert? And this is beyond only being technical. How did you get started in your career? Um, so I didn't start with digital policy. I actually, uh, out of KAUST, after a buffer period, of course, uh, I started with Siemens. Uh, I was working mostly in digital um, business development. Um, and uh, I spent about four years in Siemens. Uh, I did the graduate program there, which is a two-year rotational program. Uh, it was very interesting. I had uh, the opportunity to visit different Siemens offices uh, across the region and in Germany as well. Um, so um, maybe I started my like uh, I, technical background at uh, KAUST and then I did business development at Siemens. Uh, after the four years, uh, that's when I started my uh, role as a digital policy expert. Um, and uh, it's a, I think it's a very interesting area because uh, it's really interdisciplinary. So you have the combination of technology 
um, as well as people, which is, is something I'm, I'm really interested in. Well, that's great, Jumana. Uh, and I think you, you get a broad spectrum of expertise by having the technical business and now being in the governmental side in policy making, that would definitely enable the future of the sector. I'll come back to you, Jumana, a bit. Uh, I'll move to Ahmed. Ahmed, you mentioned you said mechanical engineering, and uh, however, you are pursuing your career in investment profession. Did you decide while undertaking your master that you want to work in a different industry? Well, the desire started back in 2016 when I joined KAUST. A few months after I joined KAUST, I had a conversation with my professor, Ravi Samtani, and he, he introduced me to the idea that many engineers, scientists, mathematicians go and work in Wall Street and in, in the financial industry. Uh, some of them work, again, in, in investment banks. Some of them work in uh, investment houses. So he told me that those skill sets that you gain in engineering are very useful and they can easily be transferred into other, into, into other interdisciplinaries, such as finance and investments. Uh, some of those work in the heavily quantitative areas of finance and investments. Others work on analyzing investments. So the, the industry is huge. And I found my, my, my place in, in the private equity area, specifically where we work on deals and we try to close deals. And uh, yeah, I, I joined uh, the Public Investment Fund back in 2018 with zero finance uh, education. I had no idea what finance is. And we, we were introduced to the training from, from zero. Everything about accounting, valuation, modeling. I kept building up my capabilities, my expertise in that area, and I'm still doing that. And yeah, that, that's how this is how the transition took place, indeed. Well, that's great. I'm I'm referring to what Jumana said about multidisciplinary work, and I think in investment where they look for to uh, invest in different variety of projects, including technical and non-technical, and they need expertise that integrating investment plus technical expertise. So it is a rare and a niche area, but I think it's very critical to have successful investments. And speaking of that, do you use your engineering background within a public investment fund currently? No, not necessarily, uh, not directly. You wouldn't use, you wouldn't, for example, uh, have a scratch paper and solve an engineering problem or a mathematical problem. But again, the skill set that you get in engineering, such as problem solving, analytical thinking, et cetera, are always handy and they're always helpful. And again, you, from time to time, you come across a transaction or an investment that has a technical element to it. And you, you, you might be able to use some of those engineering uh, things that you studied back in school. So I wouldn't say that I, I apply what I studied every day on my job, but uh, I would say I would do it indirectly through the skill set that I gained. Oh, that's great. And I look for successful investments for PIF, uh, Thank you. led by you, Ahmed. Thank you um, so much. I'm, I'm very happy to have this diverse panelist from uh, policy making, investment support, or academia. Moving to academia, Ahmed, your career journey is one of many of our alumni aspire to. That is a PhD, a role in academia. Can you tell us more about your journey in Kaos to Preston, where you completed your postdoctoral research to KPPM back to Saudi Arabia? Sure, yeah. So at Kaos, I think Kaos is a wonderful place and it provided me with a lot of opportunities to interact with international researchers. So I, I did my PhD from the group of Professor Tariq Al Khalifa in Earth Sciences. And, uh, you know, during my PhD, I got opportunities to travel and spend summers at, uh, you know, with professors at different universities whom Tariq had connection with. And uh, a couple of summers I spent uh, internship in Houston uh, working for Schlumberger, which is a service company in oil and gas sector. So, you know, at that point, I was still not sure whether I'll stay in academia or not, but having that experience, you know, in industry, although that experience was really good, I enjoyed working with uh, people over there. I think I, I felt the flexibility that academia offers you is something I really value a lot. And, and, and therefore I wanted to stay in academia. And, and once I was, you know, towards the end of my PhD, I started looking for opportunities for a postdoctoral position. And, uh, you know, from, from a couple of opportunities I got, 
I went ahead with the one at Princeton. And, and I should mention at this point, I think uh, for a lot of people who are, who are about to graduate and stuff, you know, at that point, we feel like we've spent four or five years uh, with a group and we have this very good chemistry, perhaps working with our advisor, and we can be very productive if we can spend a couple of years yeah. as postdocs within the same group. So I was also having those thoughts in my mind and I was really feeling a little sad uh, that, you know, uh, my advisor is pushing me to, you know, explore other opportunities abroad. And it turns out that that was really a wise thing to do because I, I could learn a lot more from a different group because it, after a certain period of time, you know, um, whatever you can learn from one place, you know, you kind of, it gets saturated at one point. So going to a different place and having a diverse, you know, experience over there, and, and meeting with different people, making diverse connections was really a wonderful thing. It took me a while to adjust my research to a different topic, but I think it was all worth it because as a faculty, it's, it's, it's very important that you have experienced research on diverse topics, right? So, so that was, I think, a, a, a wonderful decision to do because uh, when I went to Princeton, I, I was doing something very different from what I was at Kaus, although within art sciences, of course. And then while I was finishing uh, my postdoc, uh, I mean, e even after the uh, first year of my postdoc, I'd, I got uh, an opportunity to come back to KFEPM as a faculty. And I thought, you know, uh, this would be a good opportunity to be back in the kingdom and I could, uh, you know, continue working on, on some of the older problems and maybe bring my expertise from Princeton to kind of enrich uh, those those things. So yeah, here I am uh, about three years now at KFUPM and uh, yeah, I'll, be, I'll be sharing more during our conversation about my time here at KFUPM as well. Great, what a great journey, Ahmed. And I would like to quote from your, uh, your uh, points about getting the advice from senior people and actually hearing from the advisor. And I saw that several times that advisors usually push people toward diversity and having different experiences that will shape us up and, and help us to pursue our future. And this is actually one point to be taken for our audience that they have to consider learning and hearing from more senior and uh, our advisors and also diversifying their uh, opportunities as much as they can to learn more and, and experience more. I, so, I agree, Hussain, yeah. And, and maybe if I could add just one more point before you move on, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think one thing also I learned from this experience that you were highlighting is, you know, uh, that, you know, when you want to grow, there should be some level of discomfort involved in what you do. So I, I read a quote somewhere that there is no uh, growth without discomfort. I think that is something that our students should uh, take note of. If you are really comfortable in what you're doing, probably you're not growing. So yeah, that is what I would uh, highlight. Oh, excellent, thank you very much, Amir. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that this is very uh, interesting discussion that will, will add value to all of us. I hope that we have uh, the pleasure of time, so we'll pursue more. But um, if you allow me, Amir, I will move to Jaman asking, uh, to step a bit back to when you arrived to Cows, did you have any idea of where you wanted uh, to utilize your research in computer science and how this would take uh, your profession forward, Juman? Um, before I answer that question, you're frozen again, Hassan. Oh, uh, I'm not sure. Hey. Yeah. So Should if you repeat the question? <laughs> if you want. <laughs> Okay, so am I back? Yes, you're back. Yes, yes. you are. Okay. So Jumana, let us step a bit back to uh, when you joined Cows. Did you have any idea where your research in computer science would take your profession and future and your career advancement? Um, so the short answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm, um, I think uh, ever since like even graduating from high school, I never really knew uh, where I wanted to be exactly in the future. You know, the question of where do you want to be in five years, you know, always freaked me out. 
Um, but uh, I always felt like a direction. So at every point in time, I feel like, okay, I want to make this decision because I want to go here or go there. This is interesting for me. And I think it was the same uh, when I joined KAUST. Uh, I knew that I wanted to, um, uh, what do you call it? I wanted to uh, further my education, my technical knowledge in computer science, um, as well as in research. Um, and I had very interesting opportunities there as well. Um, so, uh, and after graduating, like I was um, also, you know, thinking about should I stay for a PhD or should I go um, go to industry right, right away. I, I was kind of uh, debating that within myself and I decided in the end to go to industry. Um, and uh, yes, it's, it's always like that. It's always, um, um, I think uh, I'm very happy with where I ended up. Um, and there's always so much, you know, so many options uh, out there. And uh, that's, I think for me, that's what's interesting about not knowing or not having um, a very specific idea of, of where you want to be or. I'm glad to hear that, Jumana, <laughs> and this uh, triggering uh, the, the thinking of the uncertainty of the future usually. Uh, uh, we have to give our most effort for the current uh, activities we are doing and in the future will come at some point of time where we should be always ready for it and not overthinking it but also in the same time planning for it and where we want to pursue so what a word of wisdom Jumana thank you I appreciate that um, uh, I, I can see Jumana and Omer have a diversity of career path however Ahmed had a unique shift from uh, technical to another career path. So Ahmed, if, uh, do you have any word of advice about changing career focus or direction for any student or our, any of our alumni thinking of changing paths? Well, uh, I would say the best asset that you could rely upon and you can bank on as well as your skill set. It's not necessarily the hardcore subject matter that you studied in college. This is what would take you far in life. And if you rely on that, you, you, would, you, would, you would achieve a lot of things. It's good to stick to your discipline again. And uh, it's good also to, 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 to further the field that you studied. And, and you, if, if you're doing, for example, research or, or if you're doing scientific work. But again, your most, most valuable asset is your skill set, your mindset, and uh, how, how you want to go about your career. Uh, this is what I actually heard from some of the People I consulted before I made this shift, and one of them again is my professor Ravi, uh, my father, and some other people as well, uh, who are again way older than me and they're far more experienced than me. And they told me that they told me, look, you wouldn't necessarily stick to the same career path or, or the same uh, the same subject matter you studied in college. You could make the switch early on. You could make it later. But again. Again, all the time, focus on your development, focus on, on your learning. This is what would uh, pay dividends in the long term. And what I would, what I would advise uh, graduates who want to make such a switch, uh, speak to people, speak to your professor, speak to your uh, colleagues who are older than you, uh, reach to your network. Uh, CAST alumni are always and always and always helpful to listen to your questions and speak to you. And yeah, this is, this is how, how, I would, how I would go about it. And one, one more thing, again, keep reading as much as you can. Reading is, 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 is highly valuable. Uh, it's one of the, uh, one of the most, most uh, important things, again, that helped me in making this switch. Uh, I read a lot and online. And now, nowadays, it's so, so easy to read. You don't have to buy a book, a physical book, and sit somewhere and read. You could just grab your phone and uh, Google any question you have. So I would say talking to people, reading about it, and uh, when you make the switch, just uh, stick to your decision and uh, uh, have good faith that it will, it will, it will pay, pay dividends in the long term. That's what I, what I would do. What a great advice, Ahmed. I appreciate your advice. And also I appreciate your braveness and willingness to change career, which is not easy. I can see Many of our colleagues, um, once they completed two years of master's degree or four or so years of PhD, they will feel that they are stuck in one track that they have to pursue for the remaining of their life. And your advice 
regarding and skilling yourself up and uh, getting a diversity of information and also consulting more uh, advanced or experienced people, get their advices in your career future and not to be uh, uh, stuck with your uh, pursued degree to see the futures, uh, the future opportunities. I um, appreciate that, Ahmed. What a wonderful advice. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ahmed. So, Amir, if you could give us a snapshot of your, your usual uh, activities, what, what does a week in your career as an assistant professor looks like? I ask you this because I see you're teaching, you're doing research, have a startup also, and also have other interests in scientific writing. Absolutely, yeah. So, you know, being a faculty is like juggling many balls uh, at the same time. Um, so basically there are three components, you know, being a faculty, one is of course teaching, which includes, uh, you know, teaching regular courses, but also advising graduate students and undergraduate students, for example, and service component is about, you know, serving your department on, on your departmental committees uh, to get some, you know, things done that need to be done uh, really uh, with the help of all the faculty. Uh, but the most important part I feel, uh, or the, the most enjoyable part also for me is, is research, right? Um, so in a typical week, you know, I would be, in the beginning, it would take me a lot more time to prepare for my courses or for teaching. But now that I have done that uh, in the first couple of years, it takes me a, little, uh, a lot less time to brush up on those ideas and quickly go over them before my classes, right? And, and service is about, you know, it, it takes time depending on each week, uh, but it, it will be serving on some committees in the department and sometimes uh, at professional societies. So oftentimes you end up spending, you know, maybe a few hours every month or, or an hour or two every week on these things. But research is the main component and research involves, you know, uh, learning about what's going on in the field, right? And also coming up with ideas, talking to collaborators and having meetings nowadays with Zoom, you know, I, I end up having meetings sometimes at, I don't know, at, at 9 or 10 p.m., which my wife is not happy about because I'm collaborating with people in, in Vancouver, for example. Uh, and, and so I think this Zoom, uh, you know, world has given us a lot of more opportunities to collaborate with, with other researchers. So a lot, a lot more focus on research, of course, uh, meetings and, and doing research, you know, uh, doing the work done by myself as well. Uh, so that's, that's, that's pretty much it. And regarding the startup you asked, so yeah, I have a great passion for scientific communications. So, you know, even when I was a student at Kaust, I, I noticed that, you know, when I go to presentations or when I read papers, sometimes it's incredibly hard and you feel bad. Why were you sitting in that room, you know, hearing some people talk about something that makes no sense or it was not clearly presented. And also with paper, sometimes we feel bad. There is something wrong with myself that I'm not able to understand this. But actually, a lot of times it, it is about, you know, that this, uh, this focus of scientific writing or scientific communication is not taught. When it comes to scientific communication, it's kind of assumed when a student walks in that this person is assumed to be good at writing. And, and you all may have experienced this, you know, when you do some research and you go and take it to your advisor, your advisor says, okay, time to write it. And you know how to do it, right? And then you're thinking, oh, you know, this other colleague in my lab did the same. I must be so stupid if I say no to my advisor, right? So this, so, so I, I, I realized that there is a lot of stress on our students and, and you know, postdocs. And therefore at Princeton, I got this opportunity to learn about teaching writing. And I, I felt that that's something really amazing that I learned and I should not, you know, sit on that information, but I should transmit that. And, and, and therefore this is a part-time thing that I have. And uh, what I do here is I, I, I kind of offer these courses at different universities and uh, I have done it several times at COWS, which have been very successful. Okay. So I, I see you saying you're frozen again. Oh, <laughs> So am I back? Yes, you are. Great. So um, I may actually touch upon a very important point that's always taken for granted and, and is, is not a critical focus or 
and skills development and usually people will take it by uh, practice but it's it's really very important especially when people pursuing their master or phd degrees where research and scientific writing is fundamental uh, skill for them to pursue their future i'm not going to talk about the unhappy wife for the mid uh, night meeting <laughs> but i uh, i'm i'm very pleased to have this diverse group of expertise pursuing different career paths and uh, i'm sure um, your insights and your experience is adding to me and for the rest of our audience in closing of our uh, conversation today i want to ask each of you to give us a small advice of career or profession to our students and new alumni Um, um, each in one minute. Um, so with Jumana, we could start if you could give us your advice. Sure. Um, very funny uh, giving advice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think uh, just picking up from what everyone was saying today from uh, Amir, from Ahmed, from yourself, Hassan, um, there's maybe not one way, like there's no one path you should take you evaluate what's best for you. And in the end, you might end up, you know, somewhere you don't expect. Um, so just be open to all opportunities. Uh, and uh, like Ahmed mentioned, keep learning, keep reading. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, another thing that's uh, quite personal to myself throughout my like studies, throughout my career, there are always moments in time where I was uncertain. Um, and uh, I think uh, it's very important to, um, um, what's the word, to, uh, to make the best of this uncertainty. I mean, I think we all feel this. We might not all talk about it all the time. Um, but uh, those moments is when I think you can be the most creative because, uh, um, you know, whether or not, you know, you're working in a field where you're an expert or you're new, Um, those are the moments where you can ask yourself, oh, what, why, how, and then, you know, make a difference with these uh, very basic questions. And sometimes uh, they do make a difference. Um, and uh, I think, yeah, I think that's it. I had more that I wanted to share, but somehow they <laughs> pop up. <laughs> uh, great. Thank you. Thank you, Jumana. And yeah. straight to the point, well done. And Ahmed, if you could share your thoughts with us. Sure, yeah. Building up on what Jumana mentioned, again, you have to be comfortable with uncertainty. You will meet uh, with uncertainty during your career many different times, and you have to be comfortable with that, uh, especially when making changes in your career. And the second advice I would give uh, graduates and uh, U.S. alumni, always, always remember that uh, you're an ambassador of KAUST. You have to represent KAUST in the best image possible. Uh, people in the market and in the industry look up to us and they, they, they ha highly value and appreciate uh, this university. So always, always keep the brand name high. And uh, again, always seek to learn and listen more than, than you talk. And uh, especially in the beginning of your career, this is how you build uh, yourself. This is how you build your, your persona. This is how you build your character as well by looking at... Uh, some great people and how, how they how they interact in meetings, how they communicate their ideas and seek to have mentors because mentors are great. They always look for you and they always try to help you advance and they always try to help you developing yourself more and more, uh, build your character again. And uh, I, I would say always be, uh, be, be, be nice and kind to people and do well by them. It will pay dividends in the long term again. I would, I would re-emphasize on that, always be kind and nice to people and do well, well by them. Uh, and again, have, have an open mind, always read, listen, learn, develop, and this is what would take you far in your career. Excellent, excellent. Thank you very much, Ahmed. Ahmed? Yes, I think wonderful advice from Ahmed and, and Jumana. There is not much to add to that, but maybe I, I would conclude by, you know, presenting some kind of a challenge to our students because, you know, you will go ahead and, and choose different career paths. But one thing that will remain is probably whatever task you do, whether entrepreneurship or, you know, faculty, you will be doing multiple things every day, right? So one thing, one challenge maybe I could present to you is how we could, you know, when we are 
coming out of task one and going into task two, how we can not let task one affect our, our mindset in task two. That is something I've been thinking a lot about. And I think that's very important to be highly productive in whatever you are doing, that you don't let thoughts coming from task one affect your task two. Uh, so, so think about that and, and, and read, as Ahmed mentioned, you know, read about that, how to be more productive in what you're doing so you can have a well-rounded life, um, uh, you know, not only in terms of your professional career, but also in other aspects of your health and your family as well. And, and uh, one, one challenge as well that we, you know, our generation or the coming generation will face a lot is how do we uh, stop or how do we, you know, control the effects of, you know, technology merging with our lives a lot. So at, at a lot of times we feel like, you know, burnout because probably there are smart algorithms that are competing for our attention and we uh, do not take the decisions intentionally. So think about these things. I think this will be very important in maintaining productivity in, in whatever you do. And, and yeah, good luck from my side and very good advice from Ahmed and Jumana as well. Great, great. Well, as you said, there is nothing to be added. What a great was, uh, was a word of wisdom from the three of us. And I really enjoyed the discussion today. I'm sure our audience too. I would like to personally thank you, Jumana Bagabma, Ahmed Ramoudi, and Amir Bin Wahid for our conversation today and words of wisdom that I'm sure will benefit our students and alumni. Thank you very much and I wish you a pleasant day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.